All right. Yes, yes. Stop blinking at me. Let's see if she launches correctly. And must do the live tweets because we're live. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Hello, everybody. I'm Dimebot. I'm joined by Movian. Uh, I know you guys are seeing the logo right now. I'm still setting up some stuff, but we're going to be playing Elite Dangerous Power Play Beta 1.3. And I think Amy. Amy. Commander? Say hi to stream. Hello. Thanks for stopping by the stream. Today we are playing Elite Dangerous. It's the best space flight sim ever created in the history of ever. Make sure to hit the follow button. You can also follow this idiot on Twitter. So if you're into that kind of thing, get to clicking. Thank you, Amy. Where would you be without me, Commander? Uh, she's a bit loud, though. It's a good thing you can't hear her. She's like the thundering voice of God in my ears, Movian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm half tempted to turn on stream audio just so I can hear what she's saying when she's got her sassy pants on, you know? Uh, she is very sassy. Alright, so, just switched over to the game, except I've got a little bit of TeamSpeak poking in. There we go. Get the stream chat up. We should be all set. So, as always, playing in my private group, I just don't do solo play. And I don't remember where the hell I am, either. I do see that I'm flying a ship that I positively hate, though. Like, I hate this thing so much. There's some conflict zones. Let's check out what the galactic powers are up to. Now, you're going to see some changes since the last stream, guys. Um, this normally wouldn't be the case, but so that the beta doesn't run for like six months, Frontier has the uh, power play cycle cranked way up. So normally it takes a week for each decision. Speaking of which, I saw some interesting conversations about power play, and I wanted to get your opinion. I love it so far. Uh, what have you seen? Because I've seen some really ugly stuff on the Frontier forums. Yeah, I, I saw some uh, stuff linked to the Frontier forums from uh, good old Reddit. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to read them all, but there was a lot of people saying power play doesn't work, make your mind up on what you're trying to do, stuff like that. Let me see if I can find it. So far, it's a little dense and it's a little hard to understand. I think that's part of it. Um, the people who are getting on my nerves are the people that are like, why are you doing this? I don't want to be part of power play. To which everybody is rightly responding, just ignore it. It's opt-in. Okay, so this this guy actually has a structured thing, and he's going through. So why don't we? Do you, do you want to tackle each of these things? He's he's got. Think it. One, two, three, four, five, six six questions. Yeah. So okay. Bring it on. Faction faction specific weapons are they faction specific or aren't they? I'm all for weapon diversity. Some, especially the Kratos Kratos scrambler. Had me extremely excited as how they will shake up the combat meta. These weapons have been at tied to a particular faction in order to give variance and flavor to the powers. However, the mechanic by which you keep them when you defect is very troubling. It ruins the whole point of them being faction specific and will make the min max players play musical factions, which undermines community loyalty and RP. Yep, that he is. Suggests, he suggests two courses of action. Uh, make. The weapons truly faction specific, lost and defectioned, and all the balancing that entails. B, make the weapons available to all. Sequentially give rewards for sticking with the same faction and unlocking a new weapon every four weeks if you persist with them. So, yeah, what do you think of that? That is actually a very good point. It was one of the first things I noticed too, is that um, when you defect, you do get to keep some of your perks and the weapons are part of it, which is, as he said, going to mess things up. So yeah, I think that they do <laughs> need to be taken away from you, stripped off your ship if you defect. Um, because mm -hmm. even sort with like, the other penalties for defecting, because if you defect, that faction will basically put a hit out on you. Mm -hmm. and, Ooh, okay. that's interesting. Yeah, they'll they will hire NPC mercenaries to hunt you down. Okay, but you know <laughs> so, you can just simply re-outfit once you die. So 
That would be one way to actually handle it, I think, is, yeah, you can defect and keep them, but if the bounty hunters catch up with you, or you get killed, you can't replace those weapons unless you're part of that faction. Right, and I mean, that's kind of real to real life. I mean, you can purchase it, but if you lose credit with that faction, they're not going to sell them to you anymore. So yeah, you can't get your replacements. Mm -hmm. um, and just and just to give credit where credit due, this is this post is by Alexander the Grape. The Grape? That's awesome. The, the Grape. It, it, that is quite an awesome name. Alexander the Grape. <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to be in big trouble in some of these systems around here because I have got so many bounties piled on my head right now because I've just been being an asshole because nothing matters. <laughs> Cause it's beta. Beta is beta. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you wanna Do you wanna jump to question two? Yes. Bring it on. Are we competing collectively with other powers or individually with members of the same power? Ah. As, Probably had the as forum user Fuzzy Spider eloquently laid out on his post, the current rating system and the fact that rank and file faction members Sounds have cute. very little in a incentive from their faction standing outside of the top three powers and being eliminated. As such, your biggest enemies are your supposed allies. The people in the same power. Again, you, you need to make a choice. Are you competing within your own faction? No bounty for attacking your allies. I really hope they don't go down this route. But better than the current system where the incentives but the, the law reward it. Or B, competition with other factions. Wars based on absolute not relative numbers of merits, or at least relative to people outside your faction, not within. Alright, so the way that I've already seen this affect a little bit is uh, one of the systems nearby, we took over. And okay. it you definitely are competing against the other factions because it dropped the standing of the faction we took it away from. Mm -hmm. uh, and it raised our standing, gave us more collective... Uh, I can't remember what they call them, CC, I can't remember what it stands for, to spend to help fortify our faction and our systems. So, yeah, in a very real way, you are competing against the other factions, but the point about competing against players in your same faction is also well taken, because if people, well, basically just act like dicks, then that can destroy a faction. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. it's, um, and the thing I think people are, let me turn the game audio down just a tad, because it's killing me. Um, I think the thing that people are having a hard time uh, wrapping their heads around right now is you kind of need to be a little more patient uh, because we've literally just started power play and this isn't even like the real f time frame of power play. So all the effects of it are really compressed right now. Hmm. Okay. So I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm annoyed because I don't have beta access. Boo hoo hoo. Otherwise it'd be in there shooting you. Yeah, I mean, uh, playing playing with you. Um. <laughs> but yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of really compressed effects. You also notice a new message on the HUD right now, guys. I am speeding. I'm exceeding station speed limit. Uh, and if I hit something, they'll find mm. me. But um, mm. like I said, everything is hyper compressed right now, so we're seeing a very exaggerated set of and, results. And just so you know, you do have a bit of a weird overlay at the top of your screen at the moment. It's just got, like, the bottom left of a window that says enter chat message. Oh. Derp. It's it's just over the top of your, your GUI for some reason. It's, um, <clears throat> that section of the screen is actually green screened and has my, uh, T-Notifier subscriber widget in it. And part, oh, of the okay. teams, part of the TeamSpeak window got set over it. It's a good thing you can't, s nobody saw the, uh, actual room name, because the... Shields offline. Ow. Oh, actual, the actual room name is offensive as shit. <laughs> Trust me, it's not as offensive as some of the stuff Nothing I'm doing successful. at the moment, but anyway. <laughs> Alright, what's question number three? Okay, um, yes, it, you, you fixed it. Um, is mining a career or an expensive hobby? As um, it stands right now, <laughs> I can answer that one off the top of my head. It is an expensive hobby still. Mining is a lot better, but it yeah. needs some fucking work. Yeah, he, he actually gives some numbers. I tried mining in a maxed out Anaconda 7A collection drones, all mining license, pristine metallic ring, only getting the best minerals, high intensity extraction site, getting extremely lucky with uh, payonite, palladium, and platinum. My profit after exactly one hour, just under one million. Yep. If I had traded on my preferred route, I would have profited around six plus times that. Mining either needs to be as good or better than trading, or it will remain a pointless career. All the boredom of trading, but with more danger and less money, not to mention the 10% equipment costs. 
will mean that to outfit your trading ship for a spot of mining will likely cost you greatly. Now, he actually gives something here that I think would be an awesome idea. Hmm. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Mining is a fun hobby. Make it more exciting. Exploding rocks, more pirates, chance for finding hidden artifacts and treasure stashes, yes. ambushes and general risk. I think that sounds really interesting. Finding like ancient buried artifacts that would give you a boost or you can sell for more money. I think that's a really good way. Yeah. It of, also of sounds mining more interesting. It also sounds exactly like something that would happen in the universe of Elite. Like I can yeah, absolutely yeah. believe that. So uh, this anaconda is actually set up for mining right now. Ooh. It's uh. In fact, there was, there was there was something I was wondering if you could show me. Actually, it probably won't because we need somebody else. So I heard that um, fuel drones are in. Fuel drones are heard, in. But I heard that they're kamikaze suicide fuel drones for some random reason. <laughs> they are, <laughs> and I would love to show it to you, but I don't have anybody else on my friends list with beta access. There's no way I can purchase beta access. No, there. the only way you could have gotten you got beta access was to actually have been in the so. game's original beta. Right, but as, as I didn't even I didn't even know the game existed until after that was over. So that's they have they annoying. have said they want to expand that. So I just think they've got too much else going on right now. Um, okay. I've also noticed a few things with an anaconda. There seems to be, and I bug reported this. There seems to be some pathfinding issues with the collector drones because I had a couple of them go suicidal into the nose of the ship instead of coming back to the cargo bay. Huh. Interesting. So it may be just the anaconda because I have seen other people mining in asps and they were not having the same problem. But the anaconda is a big motherfucker. <laughs> So. It is definitely an asp master. So, okay. um, I think mining definitely needs some work, especially because of the change in scaling on missions. Like, I'm not mm. triple, I'm not triple elite, and I still the other day I picked up a. Uh, well, well, the, the one other thing they could do is have mining missions. Yeah, I would like you know, to see and, that. And then that you know you could even have stuff like we think there's alien artifacts here, and have that as an increased likelihood of finding interesting stuff like that, treasure stashes or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, or we captured a map from this pirate faction that indicates they had a secret stash here. And yep. you you know, we but we don't know which one, so go and mine this asteroid field and see if you can find it. So you you'll know, notice, that's another good way. Yeah, that would be good. And they need to do something like that. Kills you notice I just picked up a mission that's worth three hundred and five K. And that is that's based on my rank. I uh, I know Fiery Toad, I was watching his stream the other day and we were talking about this, and I happened to find a mission I couldn't do yet. That was a mm -hmm. uh, it was a conflict zone mission. You know, your standard go here and kill this many people. It was uh, it was go to the conflict zone, kill 16 ships, and get paid 1.1 million credits on top of the combat bonds. Mm. So I've seen people picking up 750k trade runs. So they really need to do something with mining. But the other problem with mining right now is it is tedious as fuck even with the drones like I don't want it to be too easy but damn it's boring <laughs> maybe have like a mini game or something make yeah. it more interesting yeah what do I have stored here you know what just for sitch and giggles let's uh we're probably gonna get our ass kicked but once again I don't care because beta but just for sits and giggles let's take Oh, what? I have cargo. Why did why did the stoner put laxatives in the pot brownies? Why? Shits and giggles. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, I have... No wonder. I'd never sold the minerals from uh, my little mining trip. So that's... <laughs> that's 40 minutes worth of mining right there. Realistically, maybe about 20, because right. I was explaining right. stuff. And I just made about 3k. Eesh. Yeah. Eesh. Wow. Look at this thing. Right. I would love to be able to buy this. SAP got, 8 core got... container. SAP 8 core container? Imperial slaves. This container holds a crystalline shard of an origin. Scans indicate that the long shard is suspended inside a modified self sustaining fusion core containment field. Maybe the field. So, it's an infinity stone. Basically. Basically. Um, <laughs> Alright. Time to hop into so the most gorgeous ship in the game. 
All right. And there, there's, there's three more questions, but the next one I think is the one that I'm most interested in. Hmm. Is is power progression about dedication or credits? I don't know if this will pre- be present in release, but currently you can fast track your allotment of power commodities for 10,000 per unit. Each power commodity corresponds to one merit. So we can just buy merits for 10k each? Question. That... So it becomes a game of who can trade grind the most to buy merits. It seems short-sighted, unfun, and ridiculous. Yeah, also counteracted I... by the way that literally everyone else about power play seems to be rewarding hard work and dedication. Yeah, I'm not sure because I that, that's the first I've heard that. If that's true, that's awful. Like that's that's not freaking okay. I had not heard that yet. We and so and again he gives two things. A we buy ranks for credits di- uh, directly, just adding in a purchase option for each rank. A boring money sink that sucks the soul out of the game, but at least open and straightforward. B merits are for dedication, not how big your ship wallet is. Remove the fast track purchase or limit it to some extent so it's not spammable. Yeah, definitely agree. So with where that. would you, so where would you purchase these two from? Um, we'll have to go looking because um, I am currently part of a. I'm pledged to Denton Petraeus. We are very combat focused. So. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. We've taken over a lot of... A lot of freaking systems since I last logged in. <laughs> when I last logged in, our total command capital, which is what CC stands for, our total income was like 800. Now it's 1,156. Wow. Uh, that's bonkers. Let's take a look and see what we're actually doing. So see, I haven't actually earned any merits right now. Um... So well, let's let's take a look. Can you purchase them? Preparation, finance, combat, combat, in order to make if you power map, reputation rating. Where I wonder where you would purchase them from. Yeah. Hmm. So power commodity. Let's see. What are we close to? There's a system. Okay. Prep Devane to allow it to move into expansion in the next turn. Increase the level of preparation by nominating it through the screen or by completing preparation actions. Okay. 7.8 million. Highest contributing power, Denton Petraeus. Hand in units of marked military arms to prepare this system and fulfill Senator Petraeus' military contracts. Hmm. Let's take a look at expansion attempts. There's a couple close by. Support Senator Petraeus' plans by destroying the system resistance forces at military strikes in his expansion systems. Bring the combat bonds here for confirmation. That's actually something we could do. How to fortify. Okay. Take military arms from Petraeus control systems and deliver them to our contacts and systems that you want to prepare for expansion. Alright. Hmm. There's a lot of options here. What do we want to check out? Um, I don't know. I can't see the options just yet. I'm waiting for stream to catch up. Uh, um... <laughs> Well, I mean, just out of the things that I just read, preparation, expansion, and control. Expansion's always good. Let's take a look at Zeta Fornasis then. Okay, so let me chart a course for that real quick. Gotta love the fact that they let us jump from the map straight to the, uh, or from the power play straight into the galactic map. That is useful. Does it go straight to the system you select? Yes. Oh, that's useful. I like that. Oh, yeah, you want to see something that's actually really interesting? So, sure. So right now, I'm going to... I'm going to plot my route to that system, but mm-hmm. then I'm going to click into the system map, and I'm actually going to... Just You just hit plot route. Yeah, I just... And what I've, system map. Yep, but what I've done is selected the space station I want to go to, and mm-hmm. now when I actually enter that system... It'll automatically target that system, that station I want to go to for me. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's uh, one of the new functions of the galaxy map, and it's actually really freaking useful. You no longer have to stop and go through the list when you get into the system. You just plot your route all the way from uh, Engines engaged. from uh, point of departure to point of arrival. Just right there. All that right. is useful. All right. Well, oh my god. You're... This ship. Jesus Christ. Why is it so hard to fly? Is that a courier? No, I can't find the courier. No, you're in the yes. okay. No, nope. I'm in a Imperial Clipper. Oh, the Clipper. Clipper. That's that's what I meant. I know it's not what I said, but it's what I meant. And it's cockpit. It's command deck is sexy. This ship is gorgeous. I can't wait till you can get out and walk around. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, while you're while you're flying, we got two more. Fair um, enough. Are our opponents disruptible or not? I really, really like the piracy counter goals. Even just raiding NPCs of Utopian dissidents was great fun. Frame However, I fear that at risk of starting off the whole solo versus open debate again, to stay safe, couriers should simply go to solo and go relatively unmolested. Furthermore, if you were a combat-oriented player seeking to escort traders, you would not be able to prevent the pirates raiding NPCs who were Four, in solo. Three, this would not be an issue, two, but the disruption one, efforts engage. would quickly be decided by who has the most efficient point generation method, not who can disrupt outwit the other. Um... I think that that's a little disingenuous. Um, because the disruption methods work. We used it ourselves in this faction. Um, mm -hmm. They're set on certain trigger points when power play rolls over. So, uh, for example, we were we had another power that was trying to uh, fortify a system, and we went in, and I went in, and we just I killed a bunch of um, a bunch of traders that were carrying their gear, and other people in my faction did, and I know that their faction was trying to uh, trying to still get stuff delivered because their uh, marker kept ticking up, but eventually we just overpowered them. Frame shift hmm. drive so. charging. But what would have happened if they were in solo play, not in open play? Uh, I never actually saw any of them. I was in my private group. So, hmm. I think the point that that guy's missing there is Race there are engaged. enough people taking part in this Three, two, that it's going to be spread across engaged. the modes just fine. Because there are okay. people who do not play in solo or... Uh, private groups. Okay. I think he also underestimates some of the private groups that are out there. There's one that's got like a thousand members, and they s do not, by any stretch of the imagination, all get along. <laughs> so. Alright. Final question from uh, Alexander the Great. <laughs> are, mod are modules commodities or not? I can totally understand the reasoning behind the 10% equipment cost. Frontier don't want us swapping most of the parts of our ship willy-nilly. However, with no way to store transport equipment, it makes no sense either. I agree with a way to store equipment. I've long wished you could do that. The thing that most people that are making this argument and getting upset about the 10% uh, sell cost thing, that mm -hmm. I that is just getting on my nerves... If I were to go sell Shelby's car today, trade it in and get a new car, they would not give me what I paid for for that car originally. Mm -hmm. It's True. the exact same concept. But so, at the same token, you can also go out and buy a second-hand car that would not cost the same as a new one. This is true, and I would like to see the ability to buy used parts. Right, but you know, then you introduce an entire new system and mechanic that's mm. going to be interesting. I'd like to see how that would work, especially with the fact that you know you can have damaged systems. Can you sell damaged systems secondhand? Can you buy uh, a gun which has got 60% uh, health le left yeah. on it for a cheaper amount? That, that would, would be, be interesting. That would be awesome. And yeah, and things do take damage. And I love, it's one of the things I love about this game. Sai was having a serious issue the other day because she scooped up some uh, toxic waste and then banged into something with her ship. Oof. Yeah, so... And you know, that's that's one of the things I loved about, like, uh, MechWarrior Mercenaries. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you... Oh. I love that game. Oh yeah, that game was great. Just just finding the equipment. Because, you know, go on a, you go on a mission and you salvage from 
the destroyed sh- the destroyed mechs and all of that stuff, and then you can use that and repair it and put that into your own mechs. See, yeah. I thought that was freaking awesome. Earth Siege did the um, same thing. I remember being very careful about how I destroyed certain cybrids once I realized that they had, like, they they had a plasma can on their left shoulder that I really wanted. So, be very careful not to destroy said shoulder when you take them down. Yeah, I mean, if you had something like that in Elite, you could, you know, you're going up against an anaconda, and the anaconda's got a plasma cannon. Do you want to, you want a plasma cannon for that further lance you're saving up for? Yeah. You know, you're you're going to try and avoid hitting that plasma cannon. You're going to go for the other systems, and you're not going to, you're not going to just instantly go for the power reactor because that'll just blow up the whole ship, and that introduces a whole new dynamic on how you approach taking down targets because it's not instantly just target power reactor and shoot until it blows up because there's more to it at that point mm-hmm. I think I think that would really make things interesting you know, and an element you, you of that to, is go ahead and, or like you need to get parts to repair your engines so your engines get damaged so you're, t- you're attacking another ship you're not going to target the engines because you need to get the salvage from their engines to make your own repairs I think that is interesting. And there, are, interesting. there are elements of that that are already in this game. Uh, I don't think you guys have ever gotten up really close and personal with a capital ship like I have, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. know none of you have ever been suicidal enough to open fire on one. But I have. I've, I've, I've been stuck inside a capital ship. Haven't yes, I? you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have been psychotic enough to actually engage in combat with a capital ship, and the How way long you did that last. Ah, I got away with no problem. I was in my vulture. But uh, the way that you deal with a capital ship is to individually attack various bits of the ship. You don't go for the hull, and that's the way that we do it with a lot of things. But you think about it, we had a situation where a cap ship got... So, <laughs> during one of the community events, uh, it was the, wa- the big war. When the cap ship showed up at the uh, space station, which I mm-hmm. really wish I could have been there for that... But it was going to open fire on the space station. Uh, or not, excuse me, it wasn't going to open fire on the space station. It was there to demand the surrender. And a player opened fire on the cap ship, and it fired back and missed and hit the station, and the station returned fire. And so they immediately, Frontier, instead of retconning it, started another event where we had to go get stuff to repair the cap ship. So they've already got, like, core mechanics in there. They just need to expand them. You know what that makes me think of? Hmm. Free space. Yes, that's awesome a game. that's a very free space thing to have happen. <laughs> but yeah, that that game I loved it. All right. Uh uh-huh. What? You know, now that I've got a now that I've got a real joystick semi hotus set up, I might go see if I can. Because there's a there's a the remade versions which have got updated graphics that, that the open source projects and things. As I say, you can get them on GOG, can't you? Oh, probably. I pick them up on GOG and then get the open source ones to improve the graphics and add. You know, part better particles and better models. And yeah, I, I love those games, but not a fan of this weapon loadout on this ship. I actually don't like this ship. It's terrible in combat. <laughs> Good, you got the well. They're all the all the weapons are in a line across it, aren't they? Four, four in a line. Yeah, yeah. It's not mm. not exactly my favorite ship. Uh, I, I do love I, these I, weapon prices though, because <laughs> uh, I know I what this. I know what this fucking cannon actually costs in the game because my vulture's one, and it's not <laughs> thirteen grand. Um, I can't wait till if once power play comes out, I think I'll have an incentive for actually finishing saving up for my fertilance. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think I am going to be setting up with two pulse lasers or maybe two beam lasers, two, um, I think regular cannons, not the multi cannons, but I want big bada boom cannons. Like the kind then, I prefer. Yeah. But then I'm 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 blatantly going to have the huge uh, plasma accelerator. It's just got to be done. Uh huh. <laughs> I one of the things I see right now that kind of needs a little bit of balancing is um the top tier combat ships are mm-hmm. just so strong. Like mm. the only thing that can stop my vulture is another vulture or a fertilance. That's it. I go through I go through elite level anacondas like a knife, hot knife through butter. It's not even funny. Right. I mean, you know, I'm doing the same with my vulture, and you know, I just go into um, uh, an extraction site, and I just keep taking out the uh, whatever comes in, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'm just I've just got uh, two uh, two large pulse lasers. It just and as you said, I I rarely have to do anything. I mean, I I, I barely have to use chaff. Just sit behind them and blow up the reactor. And that's why I'm saying that it, having the different systems would make that more interesting, even though you're able to take them out. If you've got to be careful about what systems you're hitting and what you're hitting them with, mm-hmm. you know, then that that just that change instantly changes how you're going to approach those fights. Yeah. Oh, for anybody that was wondering why the jump range on my um on my clipper seems a bit shit, it's because it's got full military grade composite on it. <laughs> so that's I can't look at it because there's no none now that here, was but... now that was something I was going to ask you about. Now I was reading and apparently having that armor doesn't help against damage on specific systems. I didn't know if that was any merit to that or not, or what, you, or if you knew about that. I, I did. So armor in elite is interesting. Uh, it is not just oh hey now things can't hurt me. Now armor in this game is set up in a specific way. It is there's better armors for thermal or kinetic weapons. So a lot of people run the thermal armor because there's so much so much lasers, which is the reason mm-hmm. I run that big cannon because that armor is weak against kinetic weapons, and mm-hmm. cannons will just go straight through it. Okay. So, but yeah, the but, armor is generally straight hull damage reduction, but not system damage reduction. Not usually. It can impact what's actually how much damage is taken by thermal or kinetic, but there's a reason we all go for the power plant. Yeah. So, and the reason that something like an anaconda dies so quickly, despite being such a larger, more heavily armored ship, is because that reactor is proportionally bigger, so it's much easier to do significant damage to it. Right, and because the armor is not really protecting it that much, it's now yeah. that, part of that. Also, if, if you'll notice, it's a lot harder to <clears throat> knock out a a fertilance or a vulture by attacking the power plant because the way those ships are built structurally. If you look at Elite or Frontier's actual schematics for the ship, their power plants are buried in the middle of the hull. The Anaconda power plant is right next to the skin of the hull. Which that's I'm sorry, that's a stupid design. I don't. I don't care if it's fiction or reality. Why would you do that? Uh, why, why do you do this? Why you do this? The, the um, eh, blah, blah, blah. the actual explanation was something along the lines of it's primarily a commerce ship, and merchant lines would re- much rather have the uh, components closer to the uh, external or the outside of the hull to make maintenance less expensive and co- time consuming. Whereas, okay, no, I can get that. I get that. But then why is it? So it could normally got such a big bounty on it when you're in a extraction zone. I yeah. mean, come because on, is it one or the other? <laughs> I, I think what it is, I think maybe what it really is, is that everybody that flies Nick and Anaconda is just an asshole. So that's why they all have bounties. <laughs> I can get that. I, can I, get that. I know that I tend to act like much more of a dick when I'm flying an Anaconda. I ran <laughs> over like, I ran over like eight Sidewinders leaving a dock the other day. I was just like, fuck you all, I'm coming through. <laughs> so, and how many times have me, we... Me, I'm a bus, I'm a bus, fuck you, I'm a bus. Yeah. And how many times have you almost gotten creamed by an anaconda going through the mailbox slot? Uh, once or twice, once or twice. <laughs> I don't, I don't blame the Lacon Type 9 drivers, like, I feel sorry for those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, have you ever, no, I guess you've never flown a Type 9. I've flown one in one of the previous betas. Mm-hmm. People are literally not exaggerating when they say you need to start plotting a turn ten light seconds before you actually need to make it. You know, I just I just had another thing that you can just go in on that whole how you're approaching attacking a ship. Uh huh. There's there's a whole other aspect to that you can go come across. I mean, if you can get weaponry that could potentially disable the ship, you could you know you take the crew hostage and then sell them off as slaves and then sell the ship for parts. You know, I actually a, remember them. I actually remember them discussing that idea way back in development and not throwing it out 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 of hand either. So, hmm. Um, we'll have to have the actual crew system implemented first. Which, by the way, for anybody well, yeah. wondering, that is a thing. That's why when you see me look around the command deck of the Clipper or the um, 
the Anaconda, there is more than one command share because the ships are eventually meant to be crewed by multiple players in game. Isn't like the Fertilance like a sixty person crew or something? Yeah, something like that. Um the um one of the fighters is actually a two seater. Uh is it the vulture? Is the vulture actually a two seater? I think it is from what I remember. One of them has a uh, one of them has a s another command share behind and to the left of where the pilot sits. So But yeah, we're eventually supposed to be able to be able to do something like that from early early development, but a lot of stuff's got to be added before they can do that. So I don't see any What am I supposed to do here? Support Senator Petraeus's plan by destroying the system resistance forces at military strikes in the system. Bring the combat bonds to contacts in Petraeus's control. All right. Oh, according to the according to the wiki, no, I'm wrong. The Fertilance is a two is a two cruise ship. Hmm. Uh, Vulture. One of them is. Hmm. Vulture is also a two person crew. Yeah, the Vulture's the one that has the seat behind and to the left, I think. Anaconda. <laughs> mm. Anaconda's an eight crew ship. Part of that, I think, is for the turrets. Right, but I mean, there you go. So if you if you can get eight slaves, plus selling off parts from an Anaconda and maybe a bounty, mm -hmm. that's, you know, you've got multiple... Things going on there, you know. Depending on how you take the ship down, you can get all of them or just some of them. You know, if you blow up a turret that's got a crew member in it, there's less slaves when you when you capture it. All kinds of interesting things. And off we go. Ship released. Engines engaged. Ah, that would be interesting off to us. <laughs> Mighty Dime is on his way. This ship. I really don't like flying the bigger ships inside the docking ports. Oh, there's a diamond back, actually. No, that's an eagle. And an asp is only a two person crew, too. Hmm. That actually makes sense with the asp, given what it's actually supposed to be built for in game. I call that a Type 9. Landing gear retracted. That's a three person crew. Yep. Oh, God. So the Anaconda has definitely got the biggest crew complement. You know one thing that's really interesting about the Anaconda from the original Elite lore? Uh, one of What's the that? reasons they say claim that the Anaconda is actually at least decently maneuverable is that it dynamically moves its cargo around inside the hull on the fly to help counteract <laughs> uh, to help counteract inertia. Which is a so really no stupid drive. idea, wait, wait, but it's hilarious. Wait a second. Wait a second, don't the ships have inertial dampeners? Three, two, this is not one, this is not elite engage. dangerous lore. This is like original elite lore. Like okay. I meant like the old elite game, not like from prior and dangerous. That's a pretty cool concept though. Mm-hmm. Alright, where's our military strike? Ooh, and I just went to the bottom of your Twitch page and See all the spangly updates you've got down there. <laughs> Chat rules, don't be a dick. So, one thing that's... If I could find one of these here. One thing that's really <laughs> interesting about these military strikes is that they are dangerous as hell. Like, hmm. think a high-intensity conflict zone on steroids. Okay. So, I'm not... I'm not actually a giant fan of them because the first one I went to, I absolutely got my ass handed to me. I got a, uh, I literally just got face planted onto by an entire wing of elite vultures. Oh, you'll appreciate this. The um, is that my steam or yours? Um, my steam, ping in yours. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um. The um, your ranks now have mm. progress bars. Oh, thank God! I know. I so always because that's, that's what I'm working on. Because I need to, I need to get my ranks up so that I can get some decent equipment for my vulture. Mm. Mm. I always hated that. I forgot to check the shipyard back there for uh. 
Oh, check on that 10,000 thing? Well, to check for clippers. La -de, de just flying through space. Is there anybody interesting out here? Oh, we actually have another mission, too. Hmm. There's nobody interesting flying around here. That's disappointing. Where is this system that we're supposed to be going to? Sessiat. Let's see. Alright, I will be right back, guys. I need to run to the restroom. There we go. Where is the sassy yet? Galaxy map, please. Let me turn off the power play view so I can actually, you know, see things. Um. There you are. All right. I completely forgot I had that mission. Engage. Amy. How can I help? Engage. Going to plaid. Drive charging. How many jumps is this? Oh, you can now adjust your energy pips in hyper. Well, that's useful. Very. Uh, there's a bug they need to work out of that, though. Four. Uh, three. Every single time I've logged in during the beta, my shields have been completely gone. Mm-hmm. Which is, uh, not okay. So. But yeah, it is very useful. Um, it also, it's part, uh, something else they did to address something people were exploiting. Which is, uh, you used to... As soon as you popped up into Super Cruise, your shields automatically fully recharged. So if you were in trouble, let's say a conflict zone, you could slip up into Super Cruise, turn around, and pop right back in with full shields. Which was not, not okay. <laughs> that was also not okay. It was kind of like combat logging, except quicker. Come on, let's go, ship. Your hyperdrive is so freaking slow Four, to spin up. Three, two, one, engage. Now, bounty hunting requires a little more work in 1.3 because your targets are no longer just at unidentified signal sources. They can okay. also they can also just be running around in super cruise. Oh, but that's better. Yeah, that's it's way better. It is way better. It's also got a few bugs. Uh, I've seen this on the um, on the forums, and I've it witnessed it myself. <clears throat> so I took a contact, took the contract, and the guy was actually like flying around outside the space station where I was docked. And yeah, but <laughs> so he was flying a dropship, and I was like, "Oh well, I've you know he's not obviously hypering away or anything." So I'll go ahead and switch out some weapon loadouts to go ahead and kill him quicker. And when I launched and retargeted him, he was in a vulture with two vultures for wingmen. And he kicked my ass. And when I respawned, he was in the fucking Imperial Clipper. So. What? Yeah. I was like, no? Am I? Am I? Ah, John Burton. There he is. He's right there. He's in a Clipper. 
Amy. Did you need something, Commander? Deploy weapons. Weapons deployed. Weapon profile. Cycling weapon profile. Weapon profile. Cycling weapon profile. This ship's not rigged for this, is it? Nope. <sighs> I don't have a frameshift drive interdictor on this ship. Fuck. Maybe I'll just follow him, see what he does. He's in a wing, though. <laughs> and he's got a Viper... and a Vulture with him. Oh, the AI doesn't do that stupid spinning in hyper spin or in Super Cruise thing anymore. Spinning in Super Cruise? Yeah, I'm you, not aware of this. They, they would just fly in, like, really long, slow barrel rolls. <laughs> uh, they fixed that. Thank God, it looked so stupid. Hey, Dime, do a barrel roll. <laughs> Am I becoming more like my father? Wait, what? He said, do a barrel roll. Remember, Slippy always, or, uh, Peppy would say, you're becoming more like your father. Oh. <laughs> I never actually played Star Fox. I, uh, I just know the meme. <laughs> wasn't it called something else in England? Star Fox? Yeah. I don't think so. I thought it was. Star Fox. Oh, Star Wing in Europe. Ah. Where the fuck is this guy going? Back when computer games had random lore that you just had to dig into to actually get to. Mm -hmm. little, known, little known fact. Well, with the Star Fox has uh, mechanical legs. Yes, they do. Because... Because he cut them off so that his blood didn't have as far to go, so he could sustain more G-forces in his in his fighter. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. And that has clearly been retconned. If you've ever played yes. Star Fox Adventures. Well, I know that in the Smash Brothers games, he's got the uh, artificial legs. Yeah, he does. He doesn't. I don't think in Star Fox Adventures. I think he's just wearing normal pants. Or maybe they're super high-tech robot pants. I'm looking, he's got metal on his shins. Come back here, you dick. Whoa, where'd he go? Did you finally figure out I was tracking you, dude? Or did I overfly you? I never flew him. back here. I'm hoping that he's headed to... Now nah, he's just chilling, flying around in Super Cruise, so we'll go dock real quick. Except I think I'm an asshole long way from anything. Yeah, I am. Ugh. We'll jump back Thanks to San Comanco real quick, charging. because it has a starport nice and close to the star. And we'll get a frame shift. You know what? We'll just get my Python out of storage. Engage. But if that's the dumbest thing I do today, then we're doing a lot better than the U.S. military. Notice that Len Samurai hasn't shown up to do samurai things. Okay. I'm, I'm a little surprised you're by that. that. You're surprised? I'm actually a little surprised by that. Oh, okay. Apparently Star Fox Adventures wasn't made by Nintendo. Nope. I'm just saying. The robotic legs are under the trousers anyway. Star Fox Adventures is a terrible freaking game. Don't play it, ever. <laughs> Come on. Slow down. So, okay, I think... so this is hmm. so. So in my research, 
just just a random little gaming tidbit. So I'm, I've, to get the information for that, I end up on a site which is five disturbing details you didn't notice in famous video games. Oh God. And and this one, I just got to finish reading. So Final Fantasy X2 secretly makes you the bad guy of Final Fantasy VII. I haven't played X2. I, what do you think? I haven't played X2 either. Remember when you could pick up Final Fantasy games and experience the magic of getting stuck on the first dungeon without having to play any of the previous entries in the franchise? <laughs> Only they make it confusing number of sequels, but so perhaps ten two, which isn't the same as twelve. Reveal I'm two the most curious to games. see how this is gonna work. Reveal that two of the most popular games in the series are actually connected. Basically, if you played X two, then you're responsible for everything bad that happens in Final Fantasy seven. <laughs> how does that work? Well, in FF10, there's a guy called Rin who owns a shop. In FF10 too, a precious, uh, precocious kid called Shinra talks to Rin about his idea of harvesting the life force that flows through the planet and turning it into energy. This isn't a major plot point, and it's only on a small footnote that you discover that Rin eventually says, oh, what the heck, and bankrolls the kid's project. Oh, well, God. All of the money you've been giving to Rin to buy potions and whatnot has helped him fund this venture for Shinra. <laughs> but what's the harm? You've helped develop a possible new source of clean energy and made a little boy happy in the process. Oh my god. <laughs> put, a, uh, put a link to that in the uh, Axon chat so I can look at it after the stream. Oh, and you're also responsible for the horrors of a tyrannical regime. Remember this logo from Final Fantasy VII? That belongs to the Shinra Electric Company, a.k.a. the bastards who ruined everything for everyone in Final Fantasy VII. Ruled by successful. President Shinra, a global autocrat with a private engaged. army, he was essentially owned the Metropolis Midgar. The Shinra Electric Company is also behind some pretty horrific genetic blah 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 blah. So yes, President Shinra is little Shinra's descendant. In other words, by giving a nice man some money in a game set a thousand years earlier, you helped fund an evil world-destroying corporation. Nice one, jackass. <laughs> that is all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> I don't normally like clickbait sites like that, but that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I normally won't click on stuff like that either, but... So this is, I'm actually at a Python now, and uh, Python also has a very cool command <coughs> deck. So you guys get a better look at it while that goes down. So yeah, I mean, just the attention to detail. Ridiculous. Ship released. Engines engaged. Now, landing gear retracted. I do like the fact, as I said earlier, that for people that don't want to bother with all this power play stuff, you're still getting an absolutely massive patch. Two new ships, new systems, so just lots of nice stuff. Power play is completely opt-in. You don't have to deal with it if you don't want to. I personally really like the concept of it. Basically turning the galaxy into a giant game of space-going risk with real people instead of little pawn pieces. Because that's kind of how I look at power play. And I, one thing I don't understand is the people who uh, have been saying, like a couple of people I've seen, are like, I don't, I don't want to support or pledge my allegiance to any of these 2D characters that they just made up right in it, right now that have nothing Four, to do with the universe. Three, universe, and I'm like, two, do you read one, Galnet news? Engage. Like, do you actually read anything when you land at the station besides the commodities market? Me? No. Uh, it, it's me. Or these people that are complaining about that. There is a lot going on in Elite. It just doesn't shove it in mm -hmm. your face. Like uh, Petraeus? One of the reasons I joined Petraeus is because I like his personality from the news posts. Sure, he's a money-grubbing mercenary asshole, but so am I in-game. <laughs> so... Fuel scoop disengaged. I find it appropriate. God damn it, where did this guy go now?
That's the other thing that was a bit weird about that mission, assassination mission, where the guy kept changing ships. He was also in the hmm. wrong star system. Hmm. I don't have a wake scanner. God damn it. Like, seriously, I jumped in, and he just immediately hypered out. Uh, and I need to go get my Steam key for Elite in a bit, once the sights stop being broken. <laughs> so, so they actually have a naked mod for Siri now. That's hilarious. Uh, for who? I haven't played it yet. I'm still trying to go through one. Oh wow, it's gonna be a while before you get to three then. Yeah, I'm. I could. I've been told I don't have to play one and two to be able to play three. You don't. I wouldn't play but, one. But I also know that I can import my save from one to two, and I can import my save from two to three. So I have to play one. You can also just simulate those decisions. Um, no. No, I can't. Movian. <laughs> Movian, trust me on this. You do not want to deal with playing The Witcher 1. I'm, I'm playing through it already. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm actually, I'm, actually enjoying, I'm actually enjoying it. The only thing that I'm having an issue with is the, the combat mechanics are a little clunky. Yeah, I hate that game. It is not a good game in my opinion. But you get such good lines as, um, that's not the best way to take fizz tech. No? How, how do you take it? Well, you fold back the skin and rub. Where? Where you can fold back the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me drop down into normal space. And then hop back up into Super Cruise and see if this ass hat shows back up. Safety cooldown in progress. Frame oh, the uh, charging. the the courier. I did watch somebody playing through the day. The engine three, noise on it is two, godly. One, engage. Like it sounds amazing. Once we kill this guy, don't let me go back to the other system. Remind me to dock and actually uh, look for the courier in this star system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be around here somewhere. I mean, I know one sure place to get it, but I'm not flying all the way the fuck over there. Where is this guy? Amy. Yes, Commander. Give us a quote. Knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Fair enough. No contacts and range. <sighs> See, a while ago, we just tailed him across the entire system, and this time he refuses to show up. <laughs> so irritating. This is a very weird star system. Mostly harmless clean on, apparently man, they've guy. improved the docking computer too oh yay I still think those things are pointless it is much improved fast and now works on outposts notice it now also uses boosts to the station huh can you humor me and pick one up and just see what it's like? Uh, yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> the last time we tried one, it almost killed me. <laughs> you're, you're just making me want to see it more. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I suddenly have an urge to ask you to fly into a sun? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's not like it would affect me any at this point. I started in this, uh, I started with so much money, and I've just made a <coughs> shitload of it, so. 
I've also spent a crap ton of money in this beta. Like, an absurd amount of credits. I've noticed that the beta doesn't seem to be as graphically stable as the full release game. Like, my frame rate is all over the place. Hmm. I mean, it's not... See. You're not noticing it on stream because it's running at an absurdly high frame rate, but I certainly can notice it, and it's really weird. Yeah, you're going between, like, 40 and 90. Oh, why did I... I fat-fingered the disengage button. Damn it. Oh well, we're right in the light of the planet. Maybe we can get a decent look at the, uh... ship. Nope. Can't see... Well, you can kind of see some stuff. Python's really kind of ugly. Like, I'm not a, not a huge fan of their overall design. Engage. Gotta go fast. Drive charging. Four, three. This is gonna two, be the shortest jump one, in history. We're engage. literally 1.05 million miles from destination. And disengage. Hey, what's up, fuckers? Liberals. Or what's the imperial imperial aligned faction in this system? Purple family is none of them are aligned. They're all neutrals. So we'll fight for the autocracy because I'm a bastard. <laughs> Weapon profile. Cycling weapon profile. Boost. Boosting. This ship hits like a fucking truck. It also turns like one. <laughs> Offline. I'm way too spoiled by the, my vulture. <laughs> Vultures for the win, man. Although I've heard that uh, Fertilance isn't as fun to pilot as a vulture. Yeah, it's not. But but it's got a huge cannon. <laughs> it does. <laughs> that's that's what she said. <laughs> Huh, Amy must have missed that. She didn't say anything. She normally gets mad when I make that's what she said jokes. <laughs> that's what she said. It's a shame we can't set it up so she listens to like people on chat too. That'd I know. Target probably destroyed. could. Well, if you, you probably could with VAC. Be interesting to try. What do we got here? An eagle. Oh, this thing's gonna die so quickly. I almost feel bad for this guy. Target shields offline. Not quite as quick as I could have done it in the vulture though. You got them all? Hmm? Did you get them all? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, die! Waiting for stream. Boom. Target destroyed. Hey, Professor Strange Love. Yes, the space game. Hey, Prof. Under attack. Boost. Boosting. You know what? I think we could use some music for a minute. Amy. Amy. Did you need something, Commander? We're heading into combat. I think we need some appropriate music. Thank you, Amy. Where would you be without me, Commander? Target shoots offline. Huh. There it goes. Under attack. <laughs> Target 
Rocket Shield online. Power balanced. Ship's energy set to balanced. Full power to weapons. Weapons power prioritized. Target shield offline. Under attack. Boost. Boosting. Chaff. Chaff deployed. God damn, this thing is hard to kill in a python. Under attack. Target shield online. Boost. Boosting. So Chaff. I need to start. Chaff so I need to start deployed. saving up for my uh, Oculus Rift. Oh yeah, this is the only game that has me excited about the Rift. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Playing Skyrim with the Rift. Maybe playing The Witcher with the Rift. Ooh. <clears throat> Mind you, I saw a video earlier about Witcher Three, and it's titled Witcher's Witcher's Creed. This guy's. <laughs> Climbing up on rooftops and <laughs> oh god, <laughs> chap! Jesus Christ, something is eating my shields alive. Actually, you know what? Another game that I want to play on that is like Bioshock Infinite. That would be fun. With you, yes. Full power to weapons. Full power to power engines. Prioritized. Boost. Energy prior boosting. Stow weapons. Weapons oh, stowed, Commander. Boost. Boosting. Engage. Going to plan. Boost. Boosting. Chaff. Chaff deployed. Boost. Boosting. Jesus Christ, get off my ass. Boost. Ah, oh, power balanced. Four, three, Ship's energy set two, to balanced. One, engage. All right. Now that you're out of there, you should dock up and check for see if they got a clipper or courier, whichever one you're looking for. Jesus, I didn't notice that all my other allies got killed. <laughs> but situations like that are why voice attack is great. Even with most of the buttons on my Hodus. It's really hard to fly evasively and manage all that stuff. But just shouting at Amy and having it got done for you. Perfect. She does really well with uh, combat commands. It's the longer stuff that voice tech has problems with sometimes. That's why most of my combat commands are two to three words at most. You know, another thing they could do is... Um have it set up so that you can have two people flying a ship. Mm-hmm. So like a two person crew, you can have literally one person firing and then like have them have the huge cannon as a turreted gun and literally have the second person on the on the gun. That would be awesome. I would never leave the uh, the huge cannon. <laughs> Man, that makes me think back when I first played uh, Battlefield nineteen forty two. Mm-hmm. Must be. God, that was like 12, 14 years ago now. Um, four, no, it must have been like yeah, 13, 13, 14 years ago. When did that freaking come out? Damn, that's making me feel old. Uh, it's been a while. Oh, 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 our target's back. You 
came out in 2002. So, yeah, 13, 13 years ago. <laughs> God damn. God, that's... Um, and that was the first game I saw that did that, where you can have you can jump into a tank, and then you're driving, and then you have somebody else doing the gun, or you jump into a plane, and you've got a tail gunner. I was so pissed when 1943 was Xbox only. No, Prof. Battlefield 1942 did not come out in 1942. No. <laughs> it was based in Second World War. Holy shit. Wait till you catch up on stream. Look how far away I just grabbed him from with the interdictor. 400 light second. Whoop. Wow. No wonder this thing normally costs like 10 million. This is probably a really bad idea, by the way. Shit. I don't have time to be futzing around with that. Amy. Commander. Weapon profile. Attack. Cycling weapon profile. Chaff. Chaff deployed. Ow! This was a bad idea. Shields offline. Mm. Taking damage. What is... Oh god, his wingman's a vulture. Under attack. <laughs> Vultures are a nightmare to kill in a python. Chaff. Chaff deployed. Jesus! I'm gonna go boom. It's possible. I can't even get behind this vulture. I'll turn back in on the python. Canopy compromised. Oh, fuck. Module malfunction. Shit, we're, we're dead. Power plant capacity exceeded. Shields offline. Fuck me. Canopy critical. Thrusters offline. Thrusters online. Only if you ask nicely. Cannot comply. Frameshift drive charging. Chaff. Chaff deployed. Ooh. Ah. Four, three, two, one, engage. Well, let's see just how bad that was. Yeah, ow. Oh, so you got out. Nice. Alright, let's uh... Don't forget to dock up and look for the clipper. I'm not. I actually want to see if something is working better in this version though, so I'm going to drop back down. Diagnostic repair sequence initiated. This is one of the creepiest things in this game. Power plant capacity exceeded. Shields offline. Thrusters offline. You should turn the stream sound on for a minute. Repair sequence failed. Unable to process. <laughs> Thrusters online. Really? So everything's rebooting? Yeah. I thought they fixed that. Huh. Let's try it again. Diagnostic repair sequence initiated. Power plant capacity mm. exceeded. Shields offline. Thrusters offline. Mm -hmm. 
although it's still a little bit too scarily close to um, self-destruct. Uh, uh, self-destruct's actually very different now. Self-destruct is horrifying now. Like, I did it just because somebody asked me to the other night on stream, and I don't ever want to see it again. You, you, you don't want to do it again? No. We might. We might be, I might be convinced to towards the end of the stream, but... Because I haven't seen it. So, what happens... You're, you're fascinating me. What happens now is your ship Four, actually overheats three, itself two, to death. One. Engage. And, <laughs> um... So basically, you're being cooked until your ship explodes, and it takes... You know how it used to be pretty much instant? Mm -hmm. It now takes 30 seconds, and the computer gives you 10 second warnings, and then when it hits 5, it starts counting down. And it also tells you about canopy, ex canopy being destroyed, just all kinds... It's fucking horrifying. <laughs> I, I feel they missed a really good opportunity to have the ship's computer glitch out and skip four in the countdown. <laughs> but they didn't, so... Um, time to point this out. I'm wanted. You'll notice now it says how long the bounty lasts. Mm. You can no longer pay these off. Hmm. So, but if you leave it long enough, they'll just go away. If you leave it long enough, they'll stop actively looking for your ass. <laughs> but so, you can't pay it off. You can't pay them off. So they that. will expire. They'll expire eventually. But uh, of course, the greater the bounty, the more people will be looking for you. So, like, if I went back to um, Wong Gwyn right now, I would really not enjoy it. Whereas here, I'll probably be fine, because it's only a 700 credit bounty. Come on. What side of the planet is this ring on? Why is it called Delic or Dalgarno Ring when it's clearly a goddamn Coriolis space station? I hate Coriolis space stations, by the way, Movian. Just in case I've never said that to you before. <laughs> I absolutely hate them. I'm so sick of looking at them. Got some new music in the game too, I really like it. So, here we go. Look at that. Ah, boost. Boosting. Amy. How can I help? Find me a landing pad. Requesting docking permission, Commander. Docking request granted. I tried to dock at a station in that system where I'm wanted the other day, and mm -hmm. I was fine until a nosy little police ship flew by and scanned my ass, saw the bounty, and then the station opened up on me while I was inside the mailbox slot. Oof. So, yeah. Needless to say, it did not end well. Cleared the bounty, though. So, I guess that's a positive? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't like flying these big ships. Landing gear deployed. Can you switch it out for something else while you're here? Yeah, I'm gonna. One thing I do really appreciate, like, little attention to detail things in this game, is how when NPCs take off, they don't just automatically orient all to the same plane. Like, people are flying in all different uh, orientations. Which is what you would really do in space. Where is that? Have they, fix, have, have they fixed the, the whole, um, 
just staying on a pet pad, the NPCs gradually crash and you get giant debris fields. Uh, I haven't seen it. Station. I haven't seen it happening, so maybe. Oh, and don't forget to pick up a pick up a um oh, oh, computer. Oh, oh, we found it. Oh, you found a clipper? Yes. E Courier. Courier. Same this is, no, this is the new ship. Uh, there's an Imperial Clipper and an Imperial Courier. So, the Clipper's the old one, the Courier's the brand new one. Oh my god, okay. this cockpit is amazing! That's what she said. That's what she said. Don't be That's a child, what she said. Commander. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome, Commander. This thing is gorgeous. Oh my god, the weapon animation! I'm in love. Alright. Alright, let's out. Wait for the stream to cap catch up. Let's outfit this bad boy. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty damn cool. I apologize to people if I'm flipping through this stuff so fast. I've outfitted so many ships that I just know where everything I want is. Don't forget the talking computer, though. I'm not. And I'm much more interested in showing you guys the ship in space than spending a lot of time talking about potential ways to optimize it. So... I also give zero shits about cargo capacity, but it's an interesting configuration that it has right off the bat. Uh, fuel tank. Ugh, it's got an 8-ton tank. That's not good. Sell. 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 And sell. Now, some people have asked me why I always keep some type of discovery scanner on a ship, no matter what it is. There's a very simple reason for it. If you've ever jumped into a system and been like, why the fuck is the sun not showing up on my system map? Like, on your cockpit radar, it's because you sold your damn discovery scanner and the shit doesn't know where it is. So, yeah. Alright. That's... Alright. Lightweight bulkheads, A4 power plant, A3 thrusters, A3 frame shift, A1 life support, A3 power distributor. Alright. Let's look at... Oh, docking computer's an internal, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Um, docking computer... Is it the standard docking computer that they fixed, or is it the uh, other one? Well, it doesn't matter, because they don't have the other one here. What's the other one? There's a, I think there's an advanced one. Because this hmm. one's called standard, so... Let me check the wiki. Radio. Let's look at what we can put on this thing hardpoint wise. Utility mount. According to the wiki, there is only a standard docking computer. Hmm. The name of it lends me to leads me to think that there's eventually going to be another one. All right, shall we be ludicrous and put three railguns on this thing? Yes. I don't know if we're going to be able to power this ship. <laughs> put two railguns on the two railguns and a uh, multi cannon. Oh, that's sexy. Oh, yeah, I know how to fix that. I know what's eating up that much power. I think I can actually make this thing run three railguns. Oh? Yeah, because what's killing the power is the uh, the kill warrant scanner I put on it. Kill warrant, uh -huh. scanners, kill warrant scanners eat a lot of power. Huh. You know, we could just be a real dick and put a plasma accelerator on the bottom of it. 
Two rail guns and a plasma accelerator? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fuck it, I'm doing it. <laughs> Kids, this is the worst weapon configuration you could ever have on a ship. It's all high heat generation, it's all thermal damage. This is not and by, smart. And by worst he means best. <laughs> I'm gonna hit like a goddamn truck. <laughs> problem is I'm going to have like a 9 billion minute reload time. Alright. But Let's... that's not going to be a problem because you're going to shoot and they're going to be dead. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Contacts. Combat bond office. Confirm. Thank you. Power contract. Hmm, oppose control of Sassia, Sayus, however you say it. Stealing from the Dor... Or undermine the attempt to buy the system by stealing Torval deeds from the Torval's broker there and handing them into contacts here. Okay, so that's some cool power play stuff we can actually do. Now, I already know that this thing's engine sounds amazing. But I haven't personally gotten to fly it, so I don't know how nimble it is. Before we take off, though, I want to look at it on the landing pad in the debug camera. Did I hit launch or return to surface? I hit return to surface. Well, well what you can also do is if you redock with the docking computer, we can probably go into external camera and watch it docking. This is true. Oh my god, it sounds awesome. Landing gear retracted. Holy Jesus, it's fast! Boost. Boosting. Oh, it just hit 400 on the boost. Oh. Alright, I can't remember. Docking computer, you just request docking and it takes over, right? Uh, two seconds. Uh... Docking request uh, The docking computer is automatically activated when docking permission is granted. Yep, that's what I thought. So awesome, we should actually be able to watch this thing dock. Docking request granted. Auto dock in progress. Oh yeah, it's boosting. I think going into debug cam turns off the docking computer. No. I can't really... Because the computer is using the flight controls, I can't really do anything about the view, though. It's still cool. Seeing all the little thrusters go. Oh, out. God! Oh, that scared me. <laughs> the way that view was, I thought it was coming in underneath the, uh, Actual slot. Uh, it's landing gear just clipped through the uh, floor. That's weird. This is a beautiful ship. Oh, notice that there's actually a pilot in the ship now? What's up, little pilot dude? This is a sexy ship. I want to see what it looks like with all the weapons deployed. And what's the, was the docking computer playing classical music? Or yeah, the, doc docking? the docking computer automatically plays Blue Danube. <laughs> you didn't know it did that? No, that's cool. Uh, 
got a kick out of it the first time I heard it. Phrase landing gear. Landing gear retracted. Yeah, this thing is quick. That's what she said. Really finicky. So, oh my god, that's insane. Alright, let's go to, wasn't there a low intensity conflict zone around here somewhere? I don't think I want to take this thing into a high intensity. Frame shift drive <laughs> Probably <charging>. not. <laughs> Four, three, two, one, engage. Boom. This will be appropriate for Highway to the Danger Zone. Because fast. I forgot to look and see how much my heat spiked when I fired at his weapons all at once. Probably more than I wanted to know. Let's see. Let's see. Did you fire? I'm still waiting for you to get into the conflict zone. Oh, no, I was talking about... I fired when we left dock. So. Oh, okay. No, I'm still 277 light seconds away. We'll get there eventually. I'm actually glad we found one, because it's coming up on two hours, so... We'll go into the conflict zone for a few minutes, and then we can end the stream by BLOWING IT UP! <laughs> It really feels like an old-school fighter craft, the way this canopy is bubbled. Mm. You know, the way it's set, if it was a little bit bigger, um, it would make me think you were in the Outlaw Star. Yes, yes it would. It's kind of got that cool sort of shape going on. Yeah, the Imperial ships are always really nice looking. Like I like how the manufacturers are distinct in this game. T in this game too, like you know something was made by Lacon as soon as you get a look at the front glass. Mm-hmm. Who made Fertilance? Uh, Fertilance is made by Falcon De Lacy. No, Zorgon Peterson. Is it Zorgon? Yeah. Yeah, and I've so got to put a class 4 plasma accelerator on mine when I get it. I really want, like, some other just le random little tweaks in this game. Like, the technology they have. Um, can I, you know, like, decide I really like the color green and pay for something that'll let me fire green fucking lasers? <laughs> just, like, as a customization. This thing's engines. Under attack. <laughs> Maybe not the best first target I could have picked, but hell, it was right there. You went from 30 to 62 heat, by the way. Under attack. <laughs> that 
heat. I know. God! This thing is deadly. To me! Under attack. Oh god! Chaff. Chaff deployed. Uh, this is fucking wrong. Yeah, I do no hull damage with this thing. This loadout is not good. I knocked about 30% off its drive with the first shot, though, when I once I got through the shields. Jesus. Okay. Chaff. Chaff deployed. How's your power plant doing there, buddy? Ow. It may take me the rest of the stream to kill this one anaconda. Or we might run out of ammo first. <laughs> it's not quite like flying the vulture, but it still feels really great. Oh god! That thing just came at me, spinning wildly out of control. I don't understand why people have so much trouble hitting things with the railguns. It's not hard. The noise they make is amazing, too. Now, the plasma is accelerator is a little hard. Woo! Well, if you if you play... If you played uh, MechWarrior and you've got experience with the ERPPC... I don't think you should have too much problem with the plasma Shields accelerator. Shields offline. Taking damage. Canopy oh, Jesus! Canopy integrity at 50%. Run the fuck away! Frameshift drive charging. Later, fuck boys. Four, three, two, one, engage. Ooh, that was not fun. <laughs> this combat loadout is off. So what size are those? All mediums? Yeah, three mediums. Alright, well, let's uh let's go get a nice dramatic backdrop for this. <laughs> around here. Ah, there's a nice nice white planet right here. Alright, so will this work in hyper? Nope, get a drop down. Alright, so here we are. The last thing we ever see in this world will be this horrible looking planet. That place looks terrible. I would never want a vacation there. <laughs> so, time to test the new. Actually, I wonder if this will work this Diagnostic time. Diagnostic repair sequence initiated. Power plant capacity exceeded. Oh, God, is, that, that, is, that, is that Skyrim? I think it is. <laughs> Failed. Nope. Unable to process. Trust I... us online. 
Self-destruct. Here we go, Movian. Alright. Power plant capacity exceeded. Thrusters offline. Just waiting for the stream to catch up. Self-destruct in 20 seconds. Self-destruct in 10 seconds. Self-destruct in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hull integrity critical. Eject. Eject. And there we go. Boom! <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> uh. Alright, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for the stream. Movian, thank you for joining as well. Not a problem. Lovely to have you here, sir. And I'm going to go have some dinner now. So, But I'll try to get at least two more streams in while the beta is still going, guys. So, till then... Hit the follow.